Rotate a curve 360 degrees about the x-axis, and you'll get a solid of revolution. This is the curve y equals x squared from 0 to 3. If you rotate it 360 degrees about the x-axis, it's going to form an enclosed shape. This shape is called a solid of revolution. Let's look at it again. We'll learn how to calculate its volume next. This is the side view of the solid of revolution, when y equals x squared from 1 to 3 rotates 360 degrees about the x-axis. The cross sections are circles. So we even divide the solid of revolution into small disks or cylinders along the x-axis. Each small disk's volume is delta v, and its height is delta x. The coordinates of the upper left vertex is x, y. So the small disk's volume delta v is pi y squared delta x. The volume v can be estimated as the sum of all these delta v's, and it's the limit of the sum as delta v approaches zero. This is the limit of the sum of pi y squared delta x from a to b when delta x approaches zero. So pi y squared is the limit of delta v over delta x when delta x approaches zero. And this is dv over dx. So v is the integrals of pi y squared dx from a to b. In this example, the curve is y equals x squared. So pi y squared is pi x squared squared, which is pi x to power 4. The integral is pi x to 5 over 5. Put the two limits 3 and 1, we get the volume as 242 over 5 pi. Remember, there's always a pi in the volume. It's a common mistake to forget about it when you do the integration. Please be careful of it. We already see how the curve rotates about the x-axis. We can also rotate it about the y-axis. Here's the curve y equals x squared between x equals 1 and 3. This is the side view of the solid of revolution when the curve rotates 360 degrees about the x-axis. And this is the side view of the solid of revolution when the curve rotates 360 degrees about the y-axis. When it's rotated about the x-axis, the volume is the integral of pi y squared dx for x between a and b. When it's rotated about the y-axis, the volume is the integral of pi x squared dy for y between c and d. Notice that a and b are the range of x, and c and d are the range of y. Now let's calculate the volume of revolution when y equals x squared between x equals 1 and 3 rotates 360 degrees about the y-axis. First we need to find the range of y. When x equals 1, y is 1. When x equals 3, y is 9. These are the two limits of the integral. The volume is the integral of pi x squared dy. x squared is y. So the integral is pi y dy from 1 to 9. The result is pi y squared over 2. Put in the two limits 1 and 9, we get the volume as 40 pi. Remember there's always a pi here. If we rotate the part between two curves, the volume is the integral of pi top squared minus bottom squared. Remember, it's not top minus bottom squared. Let's look at an example. Calculate the volume of revolution when the part between y equals minus x squared plus 8x minus 6 and y equals x squared rotates 360 degrees about the x-axis. First, we need to find the intersections. Make the two functions equal, we have minus x squared plus 8x minus 6 equals x squared. This is 2x squared minus 8x plus 6 equals 0. Factorize it into 2 times x minus 1 times x minus 3. So x is 1 or 3. Minus x squared plus 8x minus 6 is on the top. So the volume is the integral of minus x squared plus 8x minus 6 squared minus x squared squared dx where x is from 1 to 3. We can take out pi, open the brackets, and calculate the inside. It is minus 16x cubed plus 76x squared minus 96x plus 36. 
The integral is minus 4x to 4 plus 76 over 3x cubed minus 48x squared plus 36x. Put in the two limits, we get the volume as 80 over 3 pi. In this class, we learned. When a curve is rotated about the x-axis, the volume of revolution is the integral of pi y squared dx from a to b. When a curve is rotated about the y-axis, the volume of revolution is the integral of pi x squared dy from c to d. When the part between two curves is rotated about the x-axis, the volume is the integral of pi top squared minus bottom squared dx. Remember there's always a pi in the volume.